right. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. Welcome, everyone. My name is Lewis. We are here with Boss Dems Virtual Career Chats. As you know, in today's sessions, uh, well, in these sessions, we are actually diving into career conversations about what it's like to pursue a STEM career pathway. For those students interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, listen closely to our special session today to hear about how our special guest is pursuing her STEM career pathway. Uh, our STEM guest today is coming from a company that's new to the Boston family. It, they're called HNTB Corporation. And what they're really centered around is transportation engineering and traffic management. Um, so with us today is our special guest, Megan Hanshaw. Welcome, Megan. Please introduce yourself and let us know uh, where you work and what you do at your job. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Hanshaw. Um, as Lewis said, I'm a civil engineer at HNTB. So we are a transportation engineering firm specifically. Um, what does that mean? We do a whole lot of different things. So we do roads, bridges, tunnels, we'll do transit, um, Amtrak or local transit, we'll do aviation and traffic, which is specifically what I do. A little bit more about me. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut in the Hartford area. And I went to college at a college called WPI, which is Worcester Polytechnic Institute. That's in Worcester, Massachusetts. When I actually went into college, I was an environmental engineering major. Um, and I did that for about the first semester before I switched to civil engineering. And the reason for that is environmental engineering was a little too chemistry focused. Chemistry is um, definitely not a strength of mine. Civil engineering was a really great path for me to do what I wanted and still get to experience a little bit of that side. Um, so I graduated college in 2018 and I have now been at HNPB for 3.5 years or so three and a half years as a traffic engineer in our Boston office. A little bit more about how I got to my career path. So my parents had always said as a kid, I would be a civil engineer when I was in preschool. I loved to play with blocks, um, but I definitely didn't agree with them as a kid. I wanted to be an ice skater. And after that, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Um, I wanted to be a doctor. So, you know, as all kids are, you're figuring out what you like, but my parents are right because I did turn out to be a civil engineer. The really stemmed from a program I participated in in eighth grade, a girls in engineering program, where I got to be exposed to the engineering courses offered at my local high school and learn what the students there were doing with engineering and learn a little bit more about the career paths I could take, sort of like what this program is. And that's something that really sparked my interest. So in high school, I took a few engineering courses that were offered at my high school. And um, from there, I focused my college search on schools that did engineering. So that's how I ended up at WPI. That is so awesome. So we've really knew, well, your parents really knew from young that you were going to pursue this career <laughs> pathway just by seeing the skill sets. And that speaks volume, Megan, because a lot of our students who are listening might kind of resonate with your experience and say, you know, I kind of ex pictured myself to be something completely outside of the STEM field, and here I am um, finding interest in it. Um, could you talk a little bit more, Megan, about the skills that you kind of practice on a day-to-day -day basis at your job and how you realize that they yeah. connected to your education growing up? Absolutely. So as I said, I'm a traffic engineer, which means I do a bunch of different things, and that's really how I like it. Um, I didn't want a career that I only was stuck doing one specific task over and over. I like to learn. I like to do a broad range of things. So most of my day is spent um, in an office where I am today. I do get the opportunity to go out in the field, which means go out to a project site, um, do some observations, assist with um, you know, walking around the site to see how construction is going, things like that. But day to day, really, I'll be put on a project. I'll be on that project for a couple of months and I'll do that project from start to finish. The beginning of that looks like data analysis. We'll be breaking down the number of cars on a road, how many car crashes there are. Then we'll take that data, we'll put it in a model. Um, and then from there, we'll start designing that. So a lot of the work I do is using softwares, computer software programs. I didn't learn any of those um, in middle school, high school, even college. So it was new to me. Really, the skills I use are um, my problem solving skills. Um, I definitely use some math. I think a lot of engineers do. And I do a lot of writing as an engineer. I think it's a misconception that engineers don't write a lot, but um, I'll write a lot of reports. That's a big part of it, is conveying what I'm doing um, in writing to someone who's not familiar with the project. 
So, so cool. Students, I mean, as we're hearing, there's a breadth of different skill sets. Megan, thank you so much for showing us what a project, you know, uh, what it, it feels like to be involved in the project and the different skill sets that kind of uh, present themselves in the different phases. Uh, so lots of variety there, lots of excitement. Uh, Megan, has there any, has there been any experience that you've had where um, you faced a challenge or a really difficult time? And like, how did you find yourself to overcome that experience? That's a, that's a great question. Um, and actually, you know, one of the challenges I faced was my first internship. So I did two internships in college. Um, my second internship being at the company I work for now. And my first internship was at a company that's um, a general contractor, which means they go out and really supervise construction, um, a whole lot of other things, but that's what I was doing. Um, I was living in Vermont alone and working on a talc mine. So it was very a very you know unique experience. It was my first time ever living alone. Um, I was still kind of young. I was a sophomore in college. Um, I was working at a talc mine, which was um, cool in some ways, but nerve wracking in others. Almost every single person there was a male, so that was um, that could be intimidating, you know, especially as a young female, you know, in STEM and working there. Not to mention, I also had a broken foot, so I couldn't do a lot of the duties that they had wanted me to. I couldn't really walk the site. Um, but really what I did to overcome that was um, I really looked to a couple of mentors who were there from the company. It's an amazing company. And um, I just tried to, you know, gather as much knowledge as I could from them and learn from them, even though my experience was a little limited. Um, you know, I was able to learn so much and they really, um, because I was actively showing that I was interested, they really made an effort to mentor me back. And we're still connected um, to this day, even though I don't work for that company. I love that. So cool. So you found that folks working at the company um, at your internship was was your resource or was your way to kind of uh, find support. I love that. Our yeah. students right now are really trying to understand that themselves. Um, you know, especially those middle schoolers who are transitioning into high school. You can imagine you're in all these different classes and there's so many different changes from what you were used to. And so exercising your voice right? And really just mm -hmm. understanding that there are resources available to you right in your immediate environment. So teachers, counselors, other students um, can be great ways yeah. to kind of find support. So thank you for mentioning that. Absolutely. Megan, so, you know, we're kind of talking about engineering and you highlighted a piece of uh, a piece of experience that I think we should dive a little bit deeper into. I'm thinking about our, um, our little girls that are listening and are really just inspired by your story. Um, you know, as we know, the STEM fields are male dominated. And so we're really wanting to diversify those fields. Um, what would it what would it be a piece of advice you would give to little girls wanting to kind of follow in your footsteps or are just interested in the STEM fields? Yeah, um, you know, that was that was me when I was becoming interested. It was a very male dominated field and it still is. But I will say since um, I was, you know, in middle school, 10 plus years, it's it's changed a lot. So First of all, know that um, a lot of people in the industry, you know, doing engineering, science, technology, math, are really trying to get more females and, um, you know, more diversity. But I think as a female, you have to be confident in yourself. Um, you know, use your support system, but know that you know you might be surrounded by males. Um, you're just as important. Your voice should be heard, and you do have to advocate for yourself, um, stand up for yourself, and show that you're equal or better. Um, and it's definitely a challenge at times, but it's something that is something that really helped me showing that just because I'm a female doesn't mean I can't do what the boys can do, right? Um, so if you're nervous to take the courses, you know, if you're going to be the only girl in the class, you know, do it anyway and um, maybe bring a couple friends and see if they'll do it with you. But um, it's, it's just so worth it. So that would be my advice. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Students, we're really wanting to echo here um, that message that the STEM community is so, so welcoming. We understand that there are challenges, right? Science isn't really easy. Math can sometimes be frustrating, but these are the, these are, how do I say this? These are kind of the experiences that you should go through to really understand what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And as Megan is mentioning, um, how wonderful is it to have a community that's ready and welcome to kind of have you join them and also share knowledge. Uh, Megan, you know, sharing her time today is a key example of that. So I hope that uh, we're, we're taking that this advice and applying it in, into our school classrooms. 
Thank you. So, you know, we kind of yeah. talked a little bit about what it was like growing up and we mentioned a little bit about your internships, um, you know, having worked mm-hmm. at HNTB for about three and a half years now, uh, what was it like to kind of make that transition from school into the workplace? Uh, what did you kind of do? Uh, were there internships really helpful to kind of propel you into mm-hmm. that? Um, tell us a little bit more about yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think internships would be my biggest piece of advice to anyone who's um, in high school or college, really, to grow your career and set you up. Um, you know, first of all, my internship at HNTB set me up with a job offer. So I started my senior year of college with a job offer, which um, took a lot of stress off my back. It also um, gave me connections and gave me just a little bit of a taste of what I was going to do day to day. So I could figure out if I liked it, right? Like I said, I I didn't really love my first internship in terms of the job. I learned I don't really want to work on a construction site. I like working in an office and doing more design work. Um, So internships are, you know, a really great way to see what, you know, your experience is going to be full time. That doesn't mean that when you start your job, you're not going to be scared. I was nervous. How am I going to commute to my job? Um, I don't know anyone. I was an intern in the Connecticut office and I came to Boston. So I didn't know anyone that made me nervous. I also felt like I didn't know anything. And I was worried that my company would expect that I knew everything and they don't at all. Um, Companies hire entry level people every year and they know the skills you have, which is um, problem solving skills and working with others and writing, but you might not know exactly what you're doing with the industry or the software. Um, and they expect that. So that was something that I had to learn, but was really a relief when I did learn that they didn't think I knew everything um, and they knew where I was at and they wanted to teach me things. So I would say my internship experience was a great first step into um, getting an entry level job, but it's also, you know, taking that leap and getting your first job will always be a little nerve wracking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Change, right? A change is so, so foreign to us, but it's so rewarding. Uh, so thank you for, for, you know, shedding some light on that because our students who are transitioning from, you know, middle school to high school, high school to college, or, you know, similarly like you, leaving academia into the profession or in the industry is is nerve wracking. And so just kind of having someone in it settled a little and kind of reinforcing that it's a normal process. It's a normal experience. It's, it's great for our students mm-hmm. to hear. Okay. Thank you so much yeah. for your time, Megan. Um, you know, we are kind of nearing the end of our session here. We talked a lot about um, your experience in your career pathway. Uh, is there anything that you feel like is, is, is of importance that we should um, highlight to our students? I would say something that I think is really important is um, there are so many different types of career paths you can go into. So I specifically, and from the engineering side, um, there's civil engineering, mechanical, um, it, you know, biomedical, there's many different paths of engineering. And even when you drill closer into the discipline, so I'm a civil engineer, you can be a geotechnical engineer, a planner, structural, traffic, roadway, there's so many different career paths. um, And you might not be exposed to all of those when you're, um, you know, just learning about engineering or in your initial look. So know that if there's something you're passionate about, whether it be the environment or um, something like physics, even there's probably a career path that you can do that will, you know, that will echo that. So look to your mentors. Programs like this are a great way to learn more about different um, fields you can work in. But if you have something you're passionate about, um, you can probably find a job in that. What an exciting time to be, you know, getting ready to start your work experience or just your career journey. Um, There's the idea that you can fuse. I remember when we were growing up uh, or folks generations before us were growing up, it was very rigid, right? Like you were a scientist or an engineer and there wasn't really much insight. So thank you so, so much, Megan, for for highlighting that. Students, as you know, our STEM chat um, sessions are a great opportunity for you to gain insight into what it's like for you to pursue a STEM career pathway. Megan, you know, shared her experience today. And I'm so, so thankful that she highlighted things like internships, mentors, and making that transition from school into the work, into the work field. Uh, These are really key uh, pieces of information that we hope that you students can continue to push to gain more insight on, uh, ask your educators, other folks in the STEM community, just to kind of help you best equip yourself to uh, propel yourself for the future. Uh, Megan, thank you so, so much for your time today. Uh, We've talked a lot and I don't- um, 
I can't thank you enough for you know your your uh, offerings today. Um, so what I want to do now is just uh, bring us to a close. I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us today. Our STEM chat sessions are quick and short, but please know that they will continue on for the rest of the school year. So please look at our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our newsletter. We will be reaching out to let you know when our next session will be happening. And thank you, Megan, for joining us today and providing us some great insight into what a career pathway in engineering is like. Thanks so much. All right, and with that, folks, I will bid you a great afternoon. Uh, Megan, any last words to kind of send our kids off? Um, I guess my last words would be, you know, just keep keep trying to learn and find a path and take, take a camp, read, um, see what information you can learn because there's so many interesting things out there. So I think if you guys have an interest in STEM, um, you'll find something that you love. All right, and with that, folks, take care and thank you for joining us. Thank you.